from Scrappy Mania and today I'm going to create a layout using um, some mixed media paper. Now this is a, the paper that I'm going to use. It's nice and thick and it's a Stratomore multi -me uh, mixed media um, paper and it I cut it down. It was an 18 by 24 so I cut it down and you get two 12 by 12 per sheet and two six by twelve or six by you know twenty four but usually I cut it down to six by twelve and then later on I can go ahead and cut that even further down to six by six so I want to kind of play with this paper to see how well it hands it 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 handles wet media and things like that I did buy another one um, this one, it's also a mixed media. I did not find a big pad of this. Actually, they did have a big pad, but I did not want to invest the money on a big pad until I was pretty satisfied with the papers because it's a lot thinner. This is 98 pounds, so I'm not sure how well this is going to take with a lot of my wet mediums and things like that. So that's why I bought this one. I figured this one's going to kind of stand up a lot better. So I want to play with it. I also want to play with some new stamps that I just got from Tuesday morning. And it's by Seven Gypsy. And this one is called Legends. So hopefully you don't get the glare. And then I got this other one that says Ephemera. So I want to use these for my layout. I also have this one from Heidi Swap. Um, let's see. It doesn't say the name of this stamp. Well, at least I don't see it. It doesn't really have a name, but look how cute that is. It's music notes, a little stamp there. So I'm really going to use this to kind of stamp the background. And then I have some cinnamon stamps that I'm going to use from Stamp Stampabilities. And then I also found these Fisker um, Teresa Collins stamps on sale at Joann's. So I'm going to use that somewhere. I like this one that says Memory Story. And it's also kind of vintage. So I want to use that. I pulled some of my scraps. So I want to use this to layer on my piece. So it's kind of vintage-y looking. I got this color. This is another part of the same paper pad as this one. And this is K & Company um, paper pad that I purchased some time ago. I don't even know the company because, um, I mean, the name of the paper pad. And I bet, you know, you're probably not going to be able to find it. It's very old. It's about six or seven years old. And then I have another piece of paper that I bought a long time in Costco. It's like five years old. They had a big um, stack of scrapbooking paper. And you got 350 sheets for like 20 bucks. And it came in a little um, storage case. And I went ahead and bought that. So here's my paper. The other thing I want to use is... My Amy Tam Tangerine um, stencils or whatever you want to call these. You use this with, it comes with a, uh, a needle and some thread. So I want to use that and also it comes with a stamping, well, uh, a pad 
for you can use for piercing. I want to use that. Haven't used it yet, so I want to. I got to figure out how to use it. Here's my paper. Here's my little doggy. He died um, last year, and his name was Shadow, and he was a perfect little dog. It, it was a, and actually I call him he, but it's a she. It was a she, and he, she was the perfect little dog. She was a lab Australian mix. And um, she was pretty old. She was about 14 years old. And she was sweet as can be. Even when she was younger, she always was a sweet dog. She never, never gave us any problem. Wait for us to come home and open the door. And she was a good dog. She was never mean or anything. She was just a precious dog. So I want to scrapbook uh, um, her, you know, when she was older. This is in the later days. She was getting kind of really old and... She couldn't go up the stairs anymore once we moved back to the city. and So I really wanted to scrap my little dog. So that's that's her pictures. And then I want to go ahead and put these on my layouts. These are some of the... I got some tutorial where I show you how to create these type of flowers. And here's my paper. So i got to figure out what I want to do. I do want to use some modeling paste and some things like that. Because I'm experimenting with this mixed media... Um, stuff and kind of working myself in um, up into kind of being more creative. So I'm going to speed up the video. I'll put some music on. Uh, on. I will explain some of my um, reasons why I do certain things or not. So I decided to add some of the new stencils that I got. I got my uh, Tim Holtz stencil. I got the 6x6 stencil and I also one of the things is I went to Hobby Lobby and I found this 12 designs for $3.99 of stencil and it has perfect little circles hearts flowers so and look at that one I really like the this little stencil you know these are the kind of the shapes that are in that stencil pack so I'm going to use this so the first thing I want to do is go ahead and start um, coloring and then gessoing. The other thing I want to use is I created a bunch of these new glimmer mists. So I have a tutorial on my glimmer mist. So I'm going to go ahead and use that and spray my, um, my paper. And we'll see how it, how it handles the paint and the gesso and my spraying. And I hope you like this video. So I wanted to create kind of like a drip, look, look like the paint is dripping from the top. And so to do that, I needed to have it upright a little bit on a about like 30 degree angle. And I decided to use my easel, my magnetic easel. And um, so I'm using it in the reverse side and just I have some clips holding it up because the paper's so thick the magnetic easel was not holding it in place because of the thickness but it did work pretty pretty well with just putting some clips in the back and holding it up um, to, to do this effect. second is I'm going to outline my pictures and also I'm going to outline my whole page with my um, black marker and in one point here my head is going to be in the way but I apologize ahead of time of having my head kind of obstruct some of the view of my layout. I did went ahead and used the Amy Tangerine template and 
I pierced the word love and now I'm just sewing with some of my pink thread which later on I do I don't I'm not sure if I show it in the video or not but I do kind of darken the pink um, thread with a little bit of red just to so that way it will match the red color of my circles and some other embellishments on this layout gesso to kind of give some white highlights on some of my embellishments and then I'm using glitter glue to kind of put a little sparkle on my page and I will show you the results of it at the end and then I'm using my um, gray marker to kind of give it a shadow okay, so around here, the edges I'm done with my layout now let me go over why I picked this color scheme because if you notice the purple if you see um, my dog he, he has black with a little purple, dark purple undertone. And, and that's why I picked those colors. I used my color wheel. Even though this is Stampin' Up! color wheels, the, the color is still similar. And I had my um, yellow, and which is this one. And then the, the, this brown kind of is a little dark yellow color. It's more like a gold color. To me, that was similar to Summer Sun which is an analogous color to my yellow. So if I used either green or summer sun, which is kind of like a gold, gold yellow, it will complement or it will go together. It's an analogous color to my yellow. And then, then I picked, if you look down here, the opposite, a complementary color to my yellow is, is purple. And that's why I picked the purple that you see up here. To my purple, if you notice also the coordinating cutters for my yellow will be also red. So, and that's why I used a little bit of my um, spray, my red um, misting spray. But when it did combine with the purple, it actually just created a lighter version of that purple. But you can see some of the red right here. And that's why I picked red here. Now this one, I kind of colored it in a little bit because it was pink. And there's no pink in my color, as you can see here. But, you know, pink is a lighter red. So what I did is I just darkened it up a little more with my red there. And then that's why I use red to put some red accents on these handmade photo corners. So this is my version of mixed media yeah I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of working my way up in creating layers upon layers of different um, you know paints and 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 modeling paste and stuff like that I'm not to that point yet little by little I'll get there but um, this is my interpretation of a mixed media layout so I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching bye now Thank you.